What's up guys, Nur from Egypt and in today's video is all about the most significant monuments that was discovered and opened up the door for ancient Egyptian civilization which is Rosetta Stone. Let's get started with the video. Our story will start with Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte proposed leading the French army on a military invasion of Egypt. If the French could command these crosswords between Europe and Asia, it would control trade and become the most powerful country in the world. By this time, the 29 years, Napoleon had become a legend in the, in the French army. On July in 1798, Napoleon's army sailed into Egypt's port city of Alexandria. In addition to 38,000 soldiers and around 160 of France's top scientists and the scholars were on board. The scholars immediately began their work setting up an institute in Cairo. This becomes the headquarters. Napoleon's academic explorations is scattered across Egypt, exploring tombs, sketching and recording everything. The wealth of information was unbelievable. The soldiers who made the most important discovery in, of all in mid-July in 1799 as the long siege wore on, the bridge continued to bolster their defenses situated along the Nile and interest the Mediterranean Sea in order to rebuild the Kaifei fort under the command of Lieutenant Pierre Bouchard. It started to reconstruct the walls of the uh, fort. And in the Mamluk era, they used to commonly took materials from ancient temples and use them in their own building. And then in these walls, the French soldier Pochard discovered a large stone tablet. When the soldiers tore down the fort's wall, they stumbled upon the tablet. Immediately, the soldiers noticed something strange and potentially valuable carved on this dusty stone were three types of writing Greek and common. Egyptian script called Demotic and Hieroglyphs. The French Academy for Science in Cairo received Officer Bouchard with a strange stone that was studied by numbers of scientists of, of the Academy, and copies of the stone were sent in Paris to conduct the studies and accurate analysis for the samples of the stone. Now let's get started and talk about the inscription of the stone and it was related to Ptolemy the fifth. Obviously wanted to show that he was a great king and he did a lot of good deeds for the country and also uh, he protected the country from invaders, he lowered the texts and so on. So as a result of that, so the priestly council giving him all the honors comparing him with God. And this, uh, this was distributed all over the country. After two years military campaign in Egypt, the French navy was decimated by British, who thus remained and trapped in Egypt isolated by a British naval siege along the Mediterranean coast. But the scientific and cultural aspects of French exploration were a tremendous success. This was with the discovery of the Rosetta Stone. It seems as Egypt's Great secrets would finally be revealed a civilization which has remained silent for so long. And now we'll start talking about our main heroes, which is Jean Francois Champollion. Jean Francois Champollion started his studies to, to study the stone in 1870, and he could speak the ancient Greek language, and he could through learning the Coptic and Demotic language with a because there is a connection between the ancient Egyptian language and the Coptic language. At the time, Champollion compared between the data writings on the stone. And obviously, the same name of Cartouche is Ptolemy V, and this was the first name was decoded on the text of the stone. When he compared the two writings, he could find a useful pronunciation for the same name of the king in hieroglyphs language. And this was the first language of Egyptian ancestors. On, 5th, on 14th September 1822. For example, he could find out phonetic symbols have fixed value. If you want to know the phonetic value of the hieroglyph symbol, you could get its phonetic value from its Coptic name. For example, if you have a bird owl and I don't know the phonetic value in ancient Egyptian language, I could 
find it the, the word owl in Coptic language, which is Magi. So I can get the first phonetic value, which is M. So, I so Champillion rushed to his brother, who was the director of the library, and screamed, I have found it. And he fainted. And when he came around, after a while, he said, I have discovered the secret of ancient Egyptian language, as the phonetic language don't change with the text. And on 27, and there were some attempts started in Egypt itself because Egyptians and other Arabic travelers in the medieval period who went to Egypt were intrigued and inspired by hieroglyphs they saw on temples, walls, and also on the walls of the tombs and on, on the objects. Like Ibn Wahshi's effort, uh, he could materialize in a manuscript analyzes various ancient alphabets, among them was the hieroglyphic, uh, which was had managed to decipher a several character in later used by other linguists pursuing the same goal. And also we have Coptic monks. They acknowledge that Coptic contains the remnants of ancient Egyptians. As uh, Arabic becomes more widespread in Egypt, those Coptic monks feel afraid that they are losing their language, and they started to copy manuscripts from Arabic into Coptic, and they buy preserving the knowledge of texts. And thanks uh, for watching my video and see you for the next time.